Father's favorite song. Dream, and I forgot that I recorded this with Matt. I don't even know when. In 2002? Find your really? share of I guess so. 2002? Matt Rawlings plays with everybody. And they might come Willie Nelson. No sound? Things never are Crumb. As bad as they I've say. never used that term. So dream. Crumb, I don't have any sound. Dream. <laughs> Good job, Matt Rawlings. Hi, Crumb. She doesn't have any sound. That's such a nice expletive. Crumb. Am I all straightened up here? Straight? No. No. So, wow. It's really kind of warm here. And... I had a really nice day. Mama Grace and I had a good time. We did some we did some good things today. Made dinner here at the Lil Pad and had some meetings, had some classes that I taught. And now I'm here with you, Virginia and Julie. Do you have a sound? And Janelle and Lou and Melanie, coast to coast, we're coast to coast. And Lisa Wong, hi. Hi, hi, hi. I'm just... Utanto. Lufthansa. RP. Yeah, so it is Wednesday, and that means it's Coakley Co. night, and we talk, um, there she is. <gasps> And I can bring you on camera. We'll be able to meld. Um, she'll be on in a minute. And I just want to see none. Hmm. Does anyone else having sound problems? I have the mic on. I have the sound up. How about you turn off your device and then restart? Hello, love. Everything has stopped. Mama Grace is here. 
good in Philly, or in Pittsburgh. I mean, Pennsylvania. I forget we're in Pennsylvania. I'm good. Good in Oakland. I want to get Julie back here and see what's going on. I'll call you in a minute. Chill, just be there in a minute. Hey, Bill, can you hear me? Melanie says, hey, Mama Grace. Okay, there's Virginia. Hi, Virginia, can you hear, can you hear me now? Wally World, right, Wallingford, Wally World. Yep, she's here. Now I'm waiting for Julie. So tomorrow night, Corona Roki. I did, Bill. Did you have a wonderful day? Hey, Bill, you know, I was thinking, Corona Roki is not just for singers. It could be for a poet or um, a dancer or a drummer. Bill, eating chocolate Cheerios and milk with blueberries. May I come over, please? Because those are like three of my favorite foods. Chocolate Cheerios and blueberries. Virginia, you know how to roll. I, I could do that about 2 a.m. What kind of chocolate? That's what I want to know. It's what kind of chocolate? Have you ever had chocolate? I like chocolate and cheese together. I love chocolate and cheese together. My friend Issa and I have, one time we were driving back from Ukiah, driving from Ukiah down to, to the Bay Area. No, we must have been driving up. Yeah, we were driving up and we stopped in Healdsburg. Oh, it turns the milk chocolate. There you go. But what kind of chocolate? Oh, the Cheerios are chocolate. They have chocolate Cheerios? Wow, where have I been? I lived in Willits in Mexico. I'm telling you, she knows how to roll in a bowl. <laughs> chocolate Cheerios and milk and blueberries. Well, that's so, you got a lot of superfoods going on there. Um, so Issa and I were driving up and... We stopped in Healdsburg, which we often do, and, you know, walk the square and look at shoes and um, stop in and get a little snack. And so one day I'd, I, she's like, let's stop and we'll get a little snack. And we stop at this, it's this cute little deli, you know, in Healdsburg on the square. And we bought, like, a little snack. And then, um, and some chocolate and something to drink. And the woman goes, that'll be, it was like $42. And I went, and she looked at me and I was like, what did we spend? What, we got like a hard boiled egg and some crackers and some cheese and, you know, like an Izzy or something and, and, and some chocolate. And and I think I had said to her, I'll buy, I'll buy us a snack. And, you know, it was 50 bucks. And I'm like, shit. I was like, crumb, crumb. Hi, Helen. <laughs> Hi, Helen. So I say, crumb, what would cost $42? And, you know, we get out, the, we're looking at the thing. The chocolate bar was 17 I still have, I still have the chocolate bar, the little sign on it, $17. And she looked at me, she goes, <sighs> Let's just get out. Let's just let's just pay for it and get out of here. I said, I'm not going to pay for a $17 chocolate bar. She said, I will. We loved that chocolate bar. Eddie Dixon, when are you coming back to, to sing? Sarah, hey, Eddie, Corona Roki tomorrow night. Do you know that? Every Thursday night, I have Corona Roki right here. Corona Roki? What's Corona Roki? Well, you know, Corona Karaoke, Corona Roki International Limited. I'm about to sneeze. Crumb, I'm about to sneeze. 
Anyway, so she bought the, she, I bought the, the other stuff and she bought the, you know, with tax, the $19 chocolate bar. Yeah, will you come? And if you don't come tomorrow night, will you please come back and sing for us again and talk and hang and, and Helen, I would love to have you on sometime. Everybody, anyone's invited to be on the show. But right now, I'm going to... Crumb, I can't find her. Sorry, Julie. I'll stop. Adding, 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 adding. Connecting. Hi there. I'm waiting for you to come clear. Become okay. clear. Am I clear? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Excellent. Excellent. Hello, Coquico. Hello, my love. How are you? I'm kind of low and slow tonight, actually. I got some um, biodynamic, osteopathic, cranial sacral work. Mm. Wow. So I'm That's all unwound. Like, oh, wow. in a bowl. <laughs> wow. By someone so, in your, in the, that is in your area? Yeah, there's a magic man who also goes and spends time in upstate New York. And um, mm. he's a friend and a colleague, and I do stuff for him. He does stuff for me. And uh, do you know where upstate? Gosh, you know, I don't know exactly. I'd have to ask him. But his his father's farm is there. That's where he grew up, and so he's kind of fixing it up for a retreat center over time. Because Rolf is upstate. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Huh. I wonder if they know each other because oh, he's he's a musician too. Very, you know, hmm. he played string instruments like all kinds of pianos, but not pi piano and banjo and guitar and so maybe he knows him. I don't know. I just realized I don't have any earrings on. I'll be right back. Hold that thought, or I'll, or just I'll, just I'll I'll wink. Let my earrings wink at people. Sound and video finally great, Julie. Awesome. Hmm, how you all been doing today? Anybody have anything interesting happen? I'm sure for those of you that are quite a bit east of me, maybe some of you are sleepy. It's 825 right now. Let's see what you got today. Ooh, ho, ho. Now we can meld our earrings too. I saw yours and I thought, let's see, I'll go that way. <laughs> Those are beautiful on you, Jenna. So are yours. Let's see yours closer. Come closer. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Oh, they kind of remind me. Hold on. They remind, oh, wow. Is that top part, is that fabric? No, that's Poa shell, like abalone. Oh, it's shell. Yeah, I have some pretty, hold, hold on. I yeah, I felt that coming. We get to do our girly thing here. For all our beautiful jewelry. I got gobies on today. She's got her gobies on. I've got gobies. I've got gobies. Actually, these aren't gobies. These are, are um, the, this, these are gobies, but these, um, <laughs> if I get my ear just right to the camera, I can go back and forth and start telling you that your eyelids are getting heavy. Ooh, oh my God. Oh, Jenna, those are gorgeous. I could, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Aren't they pretty? They remind me of yours. Yeah, I'll trade you. <laughs> I like yours I a lot. I had a pair in white and someone, yeah, someone wanted them really badly. And so I, I didn't say a thing. You should be able to keep your earrings, but they're beautiful. I love them. They were made in Mexico city. 
Oh. But now I feel like I should change my top. <laughs> well, we can wait. <laughs> this fashion you know, show. Yeah, I right. do have. I have a really beautiful dress that that I've worn with this at at a at a show before. Maybe sometime I'll wear them. But they, I like them because they they feel nice. So Grace can, has Grace and I have a lot of earrings together. You and Mama Grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd love to see Mama Grace's collection. She's got, she's got beautiful things. So those are gobies that you have on here. But these the other are, ones are. These are also gobies. These are purples, dark purples like aubergine. Ooh, ooh. <gasps> Wait a minute. They're purple? Occasionally you can get the purples. They're really rare. But I've been collecting a long time. However, these are not gobies, but they are agates. And they come from Indonesia. They're a grape agate. And these ones have double balls on them. They what do you mean? Oh, oh. See, these aren't separate beads in here. Right. Is there, is, what's the significance with? I don't know that there's a significance, but um, someone just made like, this is a mala. Mm -hmm. Like this like, one? Yes, with 108 beads. And, um, Maybe people don't know this, but um, see the beads are all, um, oops, doubled up. The, the balls just grew together on this rather than being singles. And then at the bottom of a lot of malas, you find these things, these danglies. And each bead can represent one round around the mala when you're saying prayers or mantras. Om Mani Padme Om, Om Mani Padme Om, Om Mani Padme Om, Om Mani Padme Om. And then when I went all the way around, I could keep track of how many repetitions I made by moving one bead up mm -hmm. each time. Oh, Virginia's show stopped and she can't get back on, so she's going to bed. She had her cereal, her Cheerios with blueberries and... Oh. Well, we're in the... Mercury retrograde is starting today, tonight. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> lots of good opportunities for lots of different things. Yes, um... Like... You know, with all the talk about chocolate, um, I was remembering when... We were come when we came together for dinner when I still had my place in Berkeley and you'd come back from Europe and you brought me, I don't know how you managed, but over I think two countries and several like six countries. Towns, you managed to carry this piece of chocolate. But from Belgium. From Belgium from all Canada. the way to me. And um that was serious chocolate. From when my friend Frank, who the, the Frank who was on a couple of weeks ago and he played tuba. He and his wife live near a chocolate factory in Antwerp. And my friend Eddie says Mercury and retrograde retrograde is a good thing. Yes. All depends on your frame. Why do you think it's a good thing, Jenna? Because it seems it, 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 it works well for me. I think because I've, I accept that it's going to be, it's different, so it's going to be good. And I've had, I've had not great things happen when it's not Mercury in retrograde and really great things have, like people will go, oh, well, you know, it's Mercury in retrograde. And I'm like, yeah, and I just had the killer gig, or I just had the greatest walk, or great chocolate, or it is. It's all about how you frame it. You know, full moons, people go, oh, you know, it's a full moon. So, and I'm like, hell yeah, it's a full moon. Bring it on. Bring. I'm in but agreement with you. There's this woman that I follow by the name of Elizabeth, Elizabeth Peru, 
and she calls it cosmic gold. And you can get stuff done. Like if there's something that's going to break or a communication, if you know it's going to be a rough time or not so smooth, you can like so surf that period of time. And you can get down into stuff and really solve like really deep problems if you're not in resistance. You know, if you really go for it, if you can embrace whatever is happening and kind of suspend efficiency and just really go for it, boy, I get some of the best stuff done during this time, but I got to surrender. Mm -hmm. Being grounded is really important during this time too. Well, we were talking about that yesterday. Hi, Cookie Marenko. I played Dream um, tonight. Who's this? Um, I, I, I played the dream that Matt Rawlings and I did, and I guess it was in 2002. Was it really that long ago, Cookie? I don't, I don't didn't know I knew you that long. I know I have. So grounding. Yes. Grounding is and, good. And, and okay, so for someone that, like, like, let's talk a little bit more about mercury and retrograde and how it can be a positive. Because like Eddie just said, I thought it was nonstop toe stubbing and com computer problems. Well, if you know it's coming, then you don't have to frame it as toe stubbing. Um, and then you can actually, some of the people I've studied basically say like, you can fix, 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 fix things. If you're going to really go for it and you're not like resisting it, it's like, oh, great. There's been this problem with my computer and it just got really bad. Now's my time to get it fixed. And let's really find out what the problem is, you know, because during Metro Mercury retrograde, it's, it's like you can have a problem that's kind of intermittent and not really deal with it and kind of skate on it. But when Mercury retrograde hits, for a lot of people, it's like you don't have a choice. You have to deal with it. So if you're not in resistance, it's like maybe you don't get this thing done that you thought you would do over, this, over the month because you're working on this issue. But the happier you are about it, the smoother it also tends to resolve. Because what we resist persists, and that's usually when we lose our grounding because we're lifting up and thinking, um, explicative, explicative, explicative. I don't want to be dealing with this. It'll just slow you down. How do you ground? What ways? Um, I have a lot of ways. I have a lot of, what, 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 what? My friend, oh, Eddie just said right on. I said, she is right on. This is Kokuko. Maybe um, I, I, I would introduce you, but this is my friend Kokuko, who's someone that I've traveled with for quite a few lifetimes and has knowledge in a lot of different healing modalities and And she's <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how to describe myself either. So mystical and knowledgeable and scientific and into healing and into these fabulous gobies and has incredible gems that she has her own Facebook page, Facebook sh uh, show that she's on quite a bit and and speaks and has these incredible um, gems you know what if we take the if we take like the the crystal piece out in the uh, mount that I have you know who that sounds like to me who you <laughs> now you, you those are all the words I could use easy for you too I mean it's been a reciprocal journey between the two of us for a really long time yeah. My friend Randy, who just showed up, he's a friend of mine from New Mexico. He's practically, we're family. 
gave me these beautiful earrings, not these. In fact, hold on a second. <laughs> yes, this is going to be serious earring day. But one of them broke and I need to get it fixed. But look at these. Oh my God. You have got the best earrings and you've got the best people around you who help you get or gift you the best earrings. That Thank color you, is my for. Raspberry? Oh, there goes my earring. Oh my goodness, Jenna, that's gorgeous and gorgeous on me. Thank you, Randy. I was actually, a, a girlfriend of mine is going to fix this, the bead broke on it and the hook broke off. So she's going to fix it like that's tomorrow. And wonderful. So thank you for saying that, Coquico. I appreciate that. I just had to do a little thank you from Randy. That was a long time ago that he gifted me these earrings. They're beautiful. Things are well loved in your home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I have a lot of treasures in this in this place. It's fun. A lot of memories, lots of connection moments. Lots and healing. It's a it's a good place for me to, to come. This is how I've always come here and done my own healing and had my own I've been on tour and then I come back. If I'm not in the Bay Area, I'm here and I have my prayer shawl and I have my things that I've uh, certain chairs and certain things I drink out of and yeah. Sanctuary. It is. It is. Oh, she's back. Oh, there it stopped again. Darn it, Virginia. <laughs> so how do we help Virginia ground and center and embrace this experience? Virginia actually gave me some beautiful I'm really beautiful jewelry this week. Oh, let's see what it looks like. Go oh. get it. <laughs> this is not Home Shopping Network, believe it or not. I'm drinking Italian uh, syrup in good quality water, and I'm drinking pomegranate peach. Mm. Poor Lillian. I keep waking. She's like, I walk in there. She's like, Mom, you need me for something? <laughs> oh. oh, that's beautiful. Look at all the work in that. Virginia, my friend Virginia made these. She did. Yeah. I know what it takes to make those. And look at, are those Venetian glass beads? Are they, are the pink ones hollow? Can't tell. Okay, those did are. Did you say, did I hear you say this is not home shopping network? <laughs> These are not. For believe sale. it or not, yes, you but did I hear that. I have a lot of stuff for sale. I sell my CDs, I sell salve, I sell. That's I have something. Jewelry for sale. This is Venetian glass, it looks like. It's beautiful. It's glass. Yeah, and they're, they look like most of those beads, well, some of them look like they could be hollow. I can't see from here. My other friend, Dr. Mary, she's a dentist. Oh my goodness. Oh, you want to see what she made me? Yes, let's do. Let's do. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Boy, isn't it lovely to see all the showering of gifts? <laughs> I don't have on the right outfit. It's okay, honey. You're beautiful in whatever you wear. I don't have on the right outfit to, to, for this to be represented. Hold on. You mm. can see the peonies on, on my refrigerator. That's okay. I'm trying to peek around the corner. You know what, Cookie? I do too. Oh. Oh. Oh, my. I have a lot of things here that I would sell. I ain't got, I ain't ever got you nothing. No, you haven't, Eddie Dixon, except. Hey, got, hey, hey, did you see what Cookie said? She said, 
She kind of likes the idea of home shopping with Jenna. I would love to be on the Hope Shopping Network. I have a friend that's on. Her name is Lee. Well, you don't necessarily have to wait to do it there. You could also do it there. I could start selling. Th I have things here. I have clothing here that I want to sell. You guys, I think I'm going to start wearing clothing for sale or hang it in the back or something. Yeah, look at this. There's Swarovski crystals. Those are Swarovski? Oh, yeah. that's that's amazing. Oh, look, and they look like they're AB, um, Aurora Borealis. They really have a color range on top of them. That wonderful pink that you look good. The raspberry rose. Da, 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 She's a dentist. Peekaboo. My friend Liz, the mayor that comes on, mm -hmm. my friend Mayor Mike Geary, his wife Liz and Dr. Mary gifted this to me for my birthday two years ago. It's spectacular. And so she does these crazy ones with all these different colors and, and good things to sell. Do you want, I have a toaster. You want to buy the toaster right there? I'll sell you the toaster. I won't sell you my juicer. I have like my little lemon juicer. Mm, 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 mm. And I will never, ever get rid of my cookie. Where were you last night? Alex DeGrasse was on. We missed you. Oh, I missed that. Still there. You could check it out. Okay. But actually, this would look kind of nice together a little bit. Here, wait. Here we go. Mm. Mm hmm. Right. right? Because the raspberry is mirrored in some of the finish. Oh, my God. That's stellar. Now, what would you wear with that? Nothing. No. Lynette, thank you so much. <laughs> No toaster, but next to the toaster. We actually thought that that went by, but I heard that. Did anybody else hear Cookie, that? Can you see my tequila bottles up there? Good girl. <laughs> no, do you know about this particular tequila? Check it out. I'm a, I am don't do a lot of alcohol, but I love a really good gold Patron from time to time. That's tequila? That's a tequila yeah. bottle? Yeah. I have but, never seen a tequila, but I can see the... Um, did you hear this? Did you know this about this cookie? Cookie. Oh, my. Yeah. Um, uh, my, a dear friend of mine has actually been... She, he's helped them make tequila at there it's a family and what kind is in there is it a clear tequila it's a or it's a reposado okay wow i like tequila hi fern it burns hi, so fern. quick in the system. but it's like i'm a one or two tablespoon half a shot girl i don't need much she I'm already a made a I thought i could do it on my next record maybe i could start my next cd like can you match that tone No, but this is C. Dream when you're feeling blue. Anyway. Nice. You, Fern's had homemade tequila. So, Lynette, thank you very much for your donation to Jenna. 1111 with Jenna. Ooh, I don't want to miss, lose my other earring. Where is it? Oh, it's here. See, this one's broken. I can't wear it. I have to put this back or it will never go back where it belongs. Well, what I want you is next time we actually get together in person, I want you to make a little tiny, like those little liquor bottles. I want you to pour a little bit of that in it. Woohoo! And <laughs> bring it so I can try it. Well, this is the tequila. I, I, I really love that. But ow, this is good too. The Maestro Dovo Diamante. I've never had that. Neither have I. Ha ha ha. Uh-huh. Savoring. Uh, and, and is it uh, Lillian who's been drinking that? Is she the one yeah. that's been drinking 
Yeah. Well, the very first night I was back in town, I, I had some of this. Oh, it's, it's called Maestro Doble Diamante. <sighs> I might have liquor once every three or four months, but looking at this tequila makes me want to have a tiny, tiny, little, like, quarter shot of vanilla bourbon. So you'll have I to drink. I haven't had it for a very long time. Okay. Well, I'll get a contact high from you, so <laughs> I'll get to taste it that way. <laughs> so there's my other earring. Okay, I don't want to lose these. Yeah, it evaporated. Exactly. It totally evaporated. <laughs> You guys are funny. So, um, anyway, <laughs> where were we? We were talking about grounding. Yeah, we were. And I was curious, <laughs> you were asking yeah. me. Oh my goodness, my neck looks so, so lonely without it. Uh, Lynette, are you going to be here tomorrow night for Corona Roki? Lynette sent me a beautiful card today and a lovely donation, and I just appreciate you so much for doing so and acknowledging. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hi, Emily Clee. Thank you. I thank you. I thank you too, Lynette. I think that what um, Jenna does for the community out of her heart and soul, especially in the middle of this crazy pandemic that we're in, I'm always grateful when people bring good energy in her direction in any form, whether it be earrings or necklaces or donations. We got to support our national treasures. Thank you. Very much. What did you have for dinner tonight, Coquico? Chicken fajitas, fresh. Mm. Mm. What did you have? I made um, Alaskan salmon and oh. salad that had, it was, the base was um, spinach and purple cabbage. And I grated carrots, I had garbanzo beans, Grace knows what else was in it, garbanzo beans, red peppers. garlic. It was God, this really hearty, lovely well, salad. When I think about the aesthetics of the plate, it must have been just gorgeous as well as really delicious. Yeah, it was. It was you ate with your mom? My mom and my brother, Mitch and Lillian. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Family yeah. meal. We had, we had, we sat outside in my yard and I haven't painted the, I have these two yellow, they're like yellow chairs. They're cool. <laughs> I found them on the street and um, I haven't painted them yet. But right, so right now they're like, they're like bright yellow. Well, you just did that incredibly beautiful, wasn't it? Kind of a, oh. now I'm either remembering a teal or a purple stool. Purple. Purple, purple. stool. Like the heart that Lynette just placed. Perfect. Yeah, I, I just remember being totally stunned by the color. Well, it's purple, but but it was originally blue. It was originally royal blue when I found it. And so I didn't have enough paint to cover the whole thing. So some of it, you can, st you can still see the blue behind. Mm -hmm. My friend Robin is really into repurposing and he paints, um, he paints, um, plaid. He'll find all these different plaids and paint them. Like my cousin, if some of you were here, my, I have a cousin that does, he works with duct tape. Bless you. And he, his name is Scooter DiMaggio and he will do these big, like he does these chicks, these baby chicks, but they're big, like a really um, graphic chick. And then there, and he makes duct tape art plaids like black watch plaids and it's crazy cool he's what been on the show come come back again. is michelle a friend of yours me michelle polis michelle polis 
I don't think, I don't know. I don't think Hi, so. Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Am I a friend of yours? I have a lot of friends I don't even know I have. You know how Facebook is. But they like following my feed because I have a really interesting feed. Your feed is great. When are you going to be back on? Oh, I'm just talking about my personal page feed, um, just the posts that I do. Oh, what did you post today with that bat thing? I was like, no. <laughs> no. This woman has a, a bat, a big bat that adopted her, and as she's eating, the bat kind of comes in from here, grabs on like, her, hangs down like, her face, and starts eating her food. It was like octopus fat. It was like... <laughs> meld of an octopus bat and it went Ugh. for those if there's anybody here who's a star trek person they had one one of those um episodes with this thing that plastered itself to the person's face i don't know if they remember it was some kind of life form it reminded me a little bit of that with more breathing space did anyone see this on facebook tonight i have to show it because it was just so fabulous my friend Laura Cooksey posted it. Do you know Laura Cooksey? She's yeah. a, you guys, this is the best. Wait, there's three of them. I'll start with this one. Oh, my goodness. Do you understand? Yes, Captain Kirk as a girl. Mm-hmm. Bones as a woman. They're all stunning, better looking in some ways than <laughs> their male counterparts. Spock. Oh, that's amazing. Isn't that great? I'll, I'll share it now. I meant to earlier. It's just, it's one of the best things ever. Well, I'll jump on your page and grab it and put it onto my curated feed yes he does have he does do amazing duct duct tape work how many of you thought it was duct tape when you were kids i did because my <laughs> dad and my mother duct tape duct or grandfather like duct taped everything i didn't know it was duct tape well you know they have gorilla gorilla glue yeah i love gorilla glue. now and um it actually um hardens they have a tape that hardens once you use it, as I recall. I mean, it's even more amazing than duct it's tape. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, unless I'm misremembering. But the thing about Gorilla Tape is that it comes in so many different colors. You mean duct tape? Duct tape? Rack, rack. Duct tape, you mean Gorilla Tape comes in colors as well? Duct tape. <laughs> yeah, I have a wallet made out of duct tape. Oh, seriously? Can you put your hands on it? I want to see. I want to see a duct tape wallet. That's in California. Okay. No luck there. Here's. I'm. I'm drinking a little bit of tequila that I bought in San Pancho, Jeff. She's savoring it. Now, there's a good work to ground things in your body, is if you can savor them. Savoring tends to take anything that you're savoring into a body gestalt, a full body thing. <laughs> Jeff is very supportive of you sipping on that tequila. I can see that. <laughs> and thank you, Jeff. I know I did. Thank you again for your your generous donation from the shows this weekend. I appreciate it very much. Oh, the shot glasses, aren't they bought these in Mexico a few years ago? When I used to live down there, and these are this is one of the things I I managed to grab quickly. Because they just don't break. Well they break if you Oh, you talked with the SP crew tonight. I'm curious. Come on and we'll talk. San Pancho is where Jeff Metzger and I met at the uh, music festival that I perform at, that I hope to be performing at again next year. They are continuing to, they're, they are having the Detroit Jazz Festival in August. I think it's the only festival I've heard of that is not canceled thus far. I'd be curious to see how they handle things. 
we got to figure it out. We can't just not forever. I'm kind of digging the not. <laughs> but yes, I think that, I think it can probably be done. I think, I, I, I don't want to be there. I mean, I do, but I won't go. I love the Detroit Jazz Festival. Well, wait and see how they decide to handle it. You know, but I know. They canceled every other festival after that, like Monterey Jazz Festival. Jazz Fest was supposed to be, um, they were going to have it in October this year instead. Hi, Nick Carter. Um, but yeah, they're continuing on with the festival. Well, they say that necessity is the mother of invention. So I guess we'll just watch and see what people do and try. So he, yeah, here. here oh, I'll... you guys can toast. What do they do for a toasting word in Mexico? Provecho. Provecho? Provecho, when you eat, enjoy. Yeah. Um, I know, now my brain's not working there. It's okay. I got one new word today. I love words. So I like what you were talking about, savoring when, when you're grounding. Yes, uh, savoring is a word that tends to go down into your body. Yeah. Oh, good for you, Jeff. Give me a bottle. Any chance that someone will promise you two bottles that you'll share with good friends? I'm I'm cheap. I only only own one a tablespoon, maybe two. <laughs> I honestly, I, that's how much I that right there is more than enough for me. If I had a little pineapple juice, I'd be like sipping along with that as well, because together that's a good combo. Tequila and apple juice. Pineapple. Pineapple. Oh yes, absolutely. But you're sending you some begging energy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other gems in front of you tonight? Savor. Mm -hmm. I like that. When I say savor, it does. It resonates. Everyone say it out loud. Savor. Savor. And then yeah. feel it. Savor. Feel it all the way down to where your feet touch and kiss the earth. Mm -hmm. Almost like, you know how cats, when cats are nursing, and babies too, actually, both their fingers and their, like their pinky fingers in their hands are pinky toes and pinky fingers are kind of doing this and kitties are doing patty paws. Knitting. Mm -hmm. So it, say savor and take all the energy down to the ground and do patty paws with your feet and let it be really yummy. This is a great way to change your chemistry. And if you know how to purr, then you can also make some purring sounds. <laughs> yes. Most people don't know this, but your feet have three arches. They have like the inner arch and one across here and one at the ball. And you can kind of like gather stuff up from the ground. <laughs> and you can also send over or extra energy or incompatible energy into the earth. She doesn't care, actually. It's all the same. We take so much from her, we can give her something back. Who, what? Who doesn't care? The earth doesn't care if oh. you just let the incompatible energy flow out. For her, it's all energy. So you can have like this relationship through your feet where you're both taking up and giving and just like the kitties do. Definitely. Hey, Mark. Hello. We were just Hi. talking about grounding. This is my friend, Jenna. We've been Hi, friends for a really, really, really long time, three decades plus. A lot of water under the bridge. She's an amazing singer. 
And she also does a lot of similar work like I do. We both have a thing for um, helping people in transitions between living into living before dying and living into dying and helping family members, all that kind of stuff. Coach, she's an amazing singer. Thank you. <laughs> Lynette, I'm down to earth. Here we are talking about earth. I'm still, I'm petty pawing with my feet. Yep. Matt, I was going to ask you if you would be interested in being here on Sunday night or Tuesday, Sunday or Tuesday. Lynette is an incredible artist, incredible artist. What kind of art does she do? Hold on, I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> then the not HSN, HSN, not for sale shopping show so far, anyway. Okay, well, should I show them some grounding minerals? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Are you sure you want to miss them? Hold the wire. I have to find. See, this place is really, it's just, it's, it's just a museum. <laughs> <laughs> well, I brought some minerals that are really good for grounding. Jenna and I were talking, um, I think it was just yesterday about that. So I have. See if I can do this. A basket full of round minerals from around the world that are really good for grounding. So I was hoping to show those to you at some point. Show it. <laughs> I'll just show you this really quick. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, Lynette. Wow. And I still have that bracelet. And the and I don't have that body, but I have that dress. And then <laughs> and there's Lillian Pearl. Oh Lillian. I was so busy looking at you, I miss Lin Lillian. I'm sorry. Um aw, here's Lillian Pearl. So Hi Star. It. It's enamel. It's like and she does oh, really cool enamel. cows and really cool dogs and she did this one of me that's like wow that that maybe Lynette if you want to send me a photograph of that other one it's really super far out I'm blown away that that was enamel because as a jeweler I've worked with enamel uh, that takes on a whole nother level of awe and inspiration for me that that's done in enamel yeah. work Ceramic tile, ceramic tile. Okay, still, still, that's painted with a glaze and then fired in a kiln, right, Lynette? Star, did you see that star is with us? I saw star, star, we never connected. We're still working on it. We're still working on it. Not I got it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lynette, I, I stand corrected. I sit corrected. I need well, to but it's, but it's no small thing to do the glazes on a tile either. You have to really know. Is it? Yes, not yes. It is in a kiln, absolutely. And you have to um, know what the colors are that you're painting on there because they look different when you paint them on than what they look like after they're fired. Lynette, send a photograph of the other one, please. Send it to text it to me. Yes, we still are star. The second star to the right. Okay, so let's see your let's see that box of oh, minerals. Balls. <laughs> box of balls. She's got a box of balls, everybody. I do, I do. She's baller. So here's a close up. They're all a really different looking, huh? Yeah. Whoops. I'm not trying. Woo! I'm not trying to sell anything. I just want to get yeah, turn on the material. There we go. Those two on this on your in your left hand look similar to each other. Yes. They are not actually. There are different minerals, and these look really different from everybody. So That's fabulous! That blue box of balls. <laughs> <laughs> So since we have um, 
South America in the house, in part. I love setting off firecrackers, fireworks, and Lillian's not a fan. Come here, baby. Girl. Someone's shitting off fireworks there? Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't. Oh. I'm sorry, Lillian. That must really hurt your ears. Mean old people. Oh. Have they stopped? Was it just like a one off or are they going to keep going? They were going off pretty solid earlier. She's just shaking. Her uh, legs are like wrapped around me now and shaking, shaking, shaking. Thank you, Lynette. Well, if we can help ground you through the energy through the screen, then you'll help ground Lillian. Okay. I'm there. So this is a material from um, Peru called aragonite. And this is what I would call a soft grounding material. When you hold this, it really does bring you down in your body, down in your legs, down into the earth, but in a really soft and gentle way. Oh, stars just hearten this up. So for people who need grounding but get scared of being too grounded, this is a great mineral for that. And I just love how it's like a coffee latte puddingy kind of thing you know you could have um yeah. like coffee mousse with uh a light coffee whipped cream it's a parfait mm -hmm. when you said get scared you mean because it would slow them down well this is like the most intense grounding material that i know of this is something called mystical merlinite or um, indigo gabbro. And um, gabbro is a big part of what the mantle of the earth is made up out of. I see my reflection in the- in Oh, the look bottom. at that. I see it too. That, that's, that's a polish. <laughs> I have never ever seen anything like that before. That's super cool. Now I'm and fascinated with that. I, what's that? I love your nail polish. Well, you were with me while I was putting it on. That's why, I put, that's why I wore the eye makeup that I did tonight. Oh, look at that. They match. Look at mm -hmm. that. Argonite. Let, I have something, but not. That's beautiful. This is the aragonite, and this is oh, the indigo. Aragonite, aragonite. Yeah, and oh. this is the um, indigo gabbro. And basically, when you hold this material to answer your question, um, um, you connect with the whole mantle of the earth. I mean, this is the gem quality, Gabbro. But imagine um, going down into the ground. Think of it as like a M&M &M, uh, candy peanut where the peanut is in the middle and then there's all that thick chocolate in the shell. Mm -hmm. The shell is, is what we live on. That's like the surface of the earth. And then the peanut is like the kind of molten core and then all the chocolate, a lot of it is this gabbro. So if you use this to find grounding in the earth, just try to imagine getting grounded into the chocolate like of the earth. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. really overwhelming for some people. I've had them handle this when we're looking for grounding materials for them. And they just freak out, especially if they um, have adapted a um, habit of being partially out of their body because their body holds too many memories sure. of things that aren't safe. And to hold something that really grounds them into their body and then into the earth can just be overwhelming. And then their brainstem, which is their survival part, will just go, not safe, not safe, not safe, put mm -hmm. the stick down. And so they will just put it down. They're used to moving. Yes, exactly. But this is a beautiful also um, silver, kind of a silvery and black. Sometimes it has a little bit of sheen. And um, anytime that you have light and dark color, like white and black together, or silver and black, a lot of those minerals are really good at helping you bring together splits in your system, things where you're polarized. Hmm. help you integrate polarization. 
Um, being um, so earthy, as someone said earlier, um, this is my favorite grounding mineral when I really got to bring it. So if I go um, get shocked by something or like a lot of things have been going on on the planet, I meditate with this in the morning a lot. These aren't my private ones, but I have some that I do. Can I interrupt you for one moment to show you yeah. this? One of Lynette's. Oh my goodness. Again, look, Lillian. Both of you have been immortalized. God, that's a gorgeous tile. Where are you from, Lynette? Because you have a very tro tropical kind of equatorial point of view. She lives in Kalamazoo, Michigan. What is what? I mean, the, this is your work. This one's arachnite over here, yeah. and this one's gabbro. If gabbro. you look at it, yeah, indigo gabbro or merlinite. Can you feel the, for those of you who are energy sensitive, can you feel the difference? Oh, can you feel that this is way more yeah. intense than this one? Definitely. For people who are not in their body and also wanting to learn to feel things when I'm doing the teaching, so I'll have them hold one in one hand and one in the other. And even if they can't put words on it, most people can feel that those are different. So this is the heavy duty mama grounder. This is a much gentler grounder. And then um, my other favorite thing to work with just in pure grounding is this beautiful material. Beautiful. I love that. Do you remember where this is from? I do not. This is from the Himalayas. Mm. Oh. It's called K2 because it is mined high up. It's hard to get this material. It's mined high up on one of the faces of K2, which is the second largest mountain mm. on the planet next to Everest. And it's right next to Everest. And these blue dots, they're, they're, called, they're from a material called azurite, or sometimes it's called afghanite. And normally it's a, like a crystal or um, an actual chunk of rock, but here they look like blue ink dots. It's beautiful. And, and the base is granite. So this is another way to ground, but this is an up and down grounder. So um, if we look in the chakra system, this is a throat color, right? Yeah. Swallow. And yeah, yeah, you've got all that, all that throat support right there, right there. And um, the granite is like what we have here in the Sierras, right? So if you just Granite really has a lot of energy. It's a piezoelectric crystalline substance. And um, it's very grounding. So when I hold this, I can feel the whole mountain and mm -hmm. feel the down vertical. And then mm -hmm. I can also feel the heavenly up vertical all at the same time, like all at once. Whereas this is just earth. That just drops you right in. Yes, that takes me into the down vertical. Mm -hmm. This one creates both the up and down at the same time. So those, there's those. And then there's this amazing material that I found recently from Russia. Can't believe it's incredible. Valerie, hi. Valerie's uh, one of my heart daughters. Did you make a, are you doing a, hosting a watch party? Me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't I, You're seeing people that I don't, I'm not seeing. Well, you, if you, did you put my name on the um, feed? It's on that, there. Okay, then it's on my wall. Wendy, hi, Wendy. <laughs> Yeah, I want to call you. My life is changing huge, hugely, Valerie. We need to go for a walk. 
Valerie lives up here in Grass Valley. Hi. And now Valerie's, now I see her. Hello, Valerie. Valerie, Valerie. Valerie is an incredible um, Vedic practitioner. She has a Ayurvedic spa. Ooh. You know, I mean, she does amazing therapies. I'm partially, I'm alive because of her. She, um, and I can also feel took, whoa, where, what was that? <laughs> um, she took me under her wing after my last husband died and worked with me on a weekly basis for almost a year because my, my spirit wasn't after all of that wanting to stay in my body very much. And so, um, I have a very, very deep space in my heart for her, um, I'm not sure what I would have done during that time, but what I did do was hang with her, and that was really good. Yes. So, um, can you? See, whoop, I'm trying to figure this out. Can you see that there? There's some big red blobs in there. I just see me. That's like weird. <laughs> here, there you are. That, and that tells you how good the polish is on this. But this has, um, I, you know, I'm not going to be able to show it very well, but there are these big blobs of um, red that are like right here. There's one. Uh, That's almondine garnet. The black is biotite mica. And then you're not going to be able to see it here because it's not sh showing, but there's all these amazing lightning bolts. Yeah, I can see them. Blue can see. and a, a little bit of gold. And that's a material called our... This is a fun one. It sounds like a dog. Arfedsonite. Arfedsonite. <laughs> I love Latin. And this material comes from Russia. It's super cool. And what I love about it is that the biotype mica, which is the black, is um, super good for the kidneys. And it's very grounding and kind of brings uh, uh, hyper arousal like the um activated like when we get triggered it brings it down mm. and then the um red is for the heart it's very good for heart healing and um then the little lightning bolts in there are super good for the nervous system like for the nerves so you know um the red also not only for the heart but for the muscles so you have heart muscles mm. nerves and kidneys all in one ball Great material, very rare, hard to get a hold of from Russia. I just love this stuff. Beautiful. So um, these are all cool grounding materials, settling the body, helping us, us get down into it. And God knows we need it these days. You're getting some questions. Yes. Uh, okay. Mwah. Uh, yes, I learned mwah from Valerie. She okay. was my, she was the one who brought me that. And then um, let's see what we got here. I don't know what the population of Grass Valley is. Do you know Valerie? What she, she's really good with us. She's super bright with the, with many things, including sometimes stuff like that. Maybe she can answer that because I don't know. In 2019, the population of Grass Valley was 12,817. How about Nevada City? Because they're kissing cousins. Grass Valley is a city in Nevada C County, California, United States, situated at roughly 25,000 feet elevation in the western foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. This historic northern gold country city is 57 miles by car from the state capital in Sacramento. And it's hard to tell where Grass Valley and Nevada City stop. They kind of continuous. When I first moved here 15 years ago, there was like this three mile um, segment of super highway in the middle of the foothills with a two lane connecting above it and two lanes connecting below it. It was just this four lane highway in either direction. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Rosalie. Do you know Michelle Bellamonte? Yeah, I Bellamonte. don't think so. I don't think so. 
Somehow David Lund sounds familiar, but I think it's because I know someone by the name of Laura Lund who lives in the Bay Area. Devi, oh my God. Devi, Devi? Not, not your Devi, not Devi Juice, but Devi Dow. Hi, Devi another, Dow. Another really deep heart daughter. All these people are coming to play with us. That's great. Um, Lynette, do I prefer the polished stone spheres to the natural stones? I do for meditating, mostly, but I've, I've got some like killer specimen pieces from the Himalayas, like huge crystals that like I can meditate with on my lap. Um, but I love, I'm, I, it's hard for me to have a point of view. I love so many different things, but if I'm meditating, I'd rather be meditating with this in my hand than I would. Um, a large crystal because I'd be I'm too aware of the crystal it's like I can't sort of forget myself this kind of sits in my hands like this but down in my lap and then um, I'm not aware of anything else except the energy of the stone and uh, source starting to flow through me into the ground and then I'm just getting out of the way so that at some point there's no I or no me, that kind of thing. Oh, deadheads wouldn't put me off. I was once. I'm sorry, Joanne. Ooh. Joanne's in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah, we've got people from all over the country right now. Oh, yeah. Coast to coast. Yes, isn't that wonderful? Multiple coasts. Yes, um, north, south too, borders, borders and coasts. I love Grass Valley. I have some other friends, the, the friends I stayed with when I drove up for your wedding. Yes. And Lisa Schiff. Mm. They built a beautiful home in Grass Valley. Martinez. I know where Martinez is. I grew up in San Francisco. Oh, I love Martinez. There used to be a great club there called Armando's that I used to sing at. What kind of music did you sing at Armando's? I, I worked there with, I think the Charmers, did the Charmers, the Charmers and with Robin and with a piano player, I think. You did? Rosalie Ann Pierce Rhodes heard me at twice at Armando's. Was I with the guitar player, I think? Yeah, I love Armando's. It's gone now, right? Because the landlord raised the rent? Turlock, as I recall, is in our um, valley. What about Turlock, Jeff? Uh, are you asking if she played in Turlock? Have I played in Turlock? I don't think so. Oh, you were solo. Hi, Victoria. You I was with the guitarist. My band played there, and then um, I was with Robin Lewis or Andre Bush. Dear friends. I don't think Rolf ever got there. You grew up where? Oh, you grew up in Turlock. Right, Jeff Metzger. How did you like growing up in Turlock? Anyway, um, while he's answering that, if he chooses to, um, you know, Lynette, if you got a nice sphere of rose quartz and got a nice sphere of, say, the indigo gabbro, which I get a sense might be good for you, I have a feeling you would be, I would, ha I have a feeling that you would be able to tell the difference because those two are so different. Maybe with a little help, I'm sure you could figure it out. Those are, the, that's right. That's, that's perfect for her. It's what I knew was good, not for me now, but no complaints. So, yeah. That's the way, that's good. I mean, you know, uh, we function with what we know. And then when we get a wider view, 
then um, what we knew sometimes is not big enough to hold us anymore. We need something larger. Yes, ma'am. Hold on, my tequila on that one. <laughs> Once the cat is out of the ba bag or out of the box, you can't get them back in. How did we meet? I'm going to let you answer that. I think your memory is okay. better than me for go that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I don't. Re I, I can't. I remember another Lynette. Lynn. Lynn. It's so far back, and I don't live in the past. I've been giving all of my past away. I, I'm I'm not about the past, so I can't I can't remember really clearly. I'm afraid. Lynn. Yes, Lynn came to see me. Mm -hmm. How did she find me? But I know I met you through her. I met you after she died. Oh, was that it? Okay, you better tell the story because I'm not remembering. Lynn was a really good friend of mine that was an incredible salsa dancer. I mean, like, like water, like, like she made you good. If you didn't, if you had never danced salsa in your life and you danced with her, you'd be like a foot off the ground with just the way she could move with your body. And um, we danced together down at Studio J in Berkeley. Mm. And we were really close friends with another dear friend of mine, Jordana, who's in LA. And uh, another woman, Susan Marchiona. And Lynn, one day, just, she had been assaulted and <clears throat> was held up and was hit in the head. And went on her, you know, went on with life and was doing some pretty heavy duty therapy and I was helping her and we were helping each other at that time. And um, her, she lived with her parents on the next hill over. <clears throat> so she lived on Albany Hill, right next to Albany Hill. And I lived in Richmond Annex. And I lived in this really cold house and big, beautiful house overlooking the bay. And she used to say, you need slippers and a really nice coat. And I go, I, I would wear it to bed. I'd wear, a I'd wear the, the coat to bed. She gave me slippers for Christmas. She came to my gig. On, uh, I did a gig in um, where my friend Gina Molita and I met the chef who's going to be here Friday night. We met. We never met, but we were working at the same place called um, Rendezvous du Monde in San Francisco. And I had a gig like on December 22nd. And Lynn walked in with this coat that I would go get right now, but Lillian's on my lap. <laughs> I really should go get it. It's this big red coat and it looks like, you look like a tomato in it, but it's this big heavy wool vintage coat. And I looked at her and I said, oh my God, Lynn, I love that coat. And she said, when I die, you can have it. Mm. And about three days later, she wasn't feeling well and didn't have insurance. And her mom called me and said, Lynn needs your help. And I talked with her and I, I came over to her house and convinced her that even if she felt bad, she needed to go to the ER. And she went to the ER and because she didn't have insurance, they told her to go home because it was just the flu. <sighs> so she went home and she got really sick and we took her back to the hospital and she ended up having a, um, from that hit, she had a, um, what's the word? I can't think of the word now. She had an infection, but it ended up being like a flesh eating virus. Mm -hmm. And by New Year's Eve day, she was dead. Wow. And then I went to her parents' house and her mom walked out of the room. She goes, I'll be right back. And I said, okay. And she came back and she said, Lynn came home and said, I told Jenna Mamina that when I die, she gets this coat. Mm. And she had already given me these pajamas and a, and a really beautiful, beautiful pair of puppies. I was going to say of, of um, 
slippers, and inside the coat pockets were her gloves that I still had. Aww. And then she had mentioned you to me that I should get in touch with you. And we talked about spiders. She, she taught me to not be afraid of spiders, even though it kind of didn't work. She loved spiders. And when you and I first talked, you had had some like little rubber spiders in your place. It was the place up in the Elmwood. Yes. Yes. That had the carpet on the walls, blue carpet. And you could sit in these weird, right? Yeah, it was a converted garage. That's when we met. That was a long time ago, honey. So much water under the bridge. Yeah. But I remember, even though I don't remember the details, I remember my profound love for Lynn because she was a very, very, very unusual being. She was uh, another one of those angels in a skin suit. Yeah. She should, I, I, she should still be here. Yeah. But so. one really wonderful thing came out of it, which is that we met each other and we keep her um, memory alive. I don't do it in the details, but I do it in the energetic felt sense, which is still very alive in my heart. I'm not into spiders or snakes. I don't like spiders or snakes, but that ain't what it takes to love me. Yeah, Lynn. She was cool. And then her mom and I used to hang out quite a bit. And now she's there together. Um, Lynette, to answer your question, yes, you should get two stones that are polished. And you have a, a bigger energy. Um, so don't get two tiny little things. They're going to be too small. You know, get, 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 invest in something with some size. I'm sure you've got some good mineral places around you. If you want help, I'll help you out. But don't be penny wise and pound foolish. You, you specifically need something larger. Some people can do okay with these little pocket rocks, but you're not a pocket rock girl. There's a place here, there, uh, uh, close to here, within 20, half, half an hour, and there's probably something in Kalamazoo. You know what? Maybe the two of you, uh, do you guys actually right. hang out? Lynette supported me at my gigs in the past. Hi, Dawn. Are you still on your trip? Um, she's come to my shows and she sings at Corona Roki. Oh, wonderful. Well, I was just, I didn't know what the level of hangout was, but. It um, needs to be more. I think I would love to hang out with her and I could, I could help definitely do some muscle testing and energy work around that. Yeah, I would love to see you do that. Um, if you're not so um, uh, used to the minerals, Jenna's got it dialed in. She's touched, so because when I used to work in Berkeley, I had an altar there and I would always have it covered with a manta from my Peruvian teachers. And usually one of my skull helpers because um, wisdom beings come and inhabit crystal skulls. And I used to ask them every day, every trip down, because I used to go twice a month, who wants to come down with me? And I got definite answers. And then I bring extra rocks and stuff and put them all around. So when she would come, she would pick things up and hold them and play with them. Lillian even, she would hang out with the, the skulls. She That's loved. true, that's true. I like you, Lynette. Go big. Lynette. Go home. <laughs> Hi, Dawn. I'm not sure where Dawn is at this moment. She was on it. She was on vacation. Not in Wyoming. In Utah. Sorry, I forget it. But she lives in the Bay Area. She's a San Jose girl. No. I'm just giving Jeff a nod for big fish in a small pond has its advantages. <laughs> That's kind of what happened to me between middle school and high school. I got to be a bigger fish in a smaller pond. And then when I hit high school, oh, then I was a small fish in a huge pond. It was very disorienting. I was going to say Idaho first, and then I went, no. I'm, I'm noticing that my 
flowers behind me look like I have little spikes coming out of my head. You can do a dance, make a whole huh? dance out of that. Okay, we've got a start on Frida Kaho here without the unibrow. Oh, I had it. <laughs> Not quite, but I had much. I have my father's eyebrows. But thank you for my friend, um, Lucia. She's the eyebrow whisperer. Aha, uh -huh. does she thread your eyebrows? She has, now she just, she just gently plucks them. Threading actually can cause marks because where they rest the thing, then there's this. Yeah, I know, and waxing's not so great either. Gently plucking sounds like a good thing. No, no, no. She's, <laughs> she, is the, she is literally the eyebrow whisperer. She's in Oakland. Lucia's health and beauty. Lucia. I, I, they bought certifi cert certificates for people. Um, one time, Robin, my guitar player friend, his eyebrows are so loud, you hear them. Yeah. How do you hear them? Because I hear everything. He just, no, they, you could hear them move. <laughs> so I sent him to Virginia. <laughs> And then they got quieter. <laughs> she called, she cut my eyebrows and she, she cut my hair, but then she cut my eyebrows. I'm like, good. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of anybody whose eyebrows wrestled. I can hear everything. That's not always a good thing. I hear all, I hear voices. Yes. Well, I hear those too. And I'm got pretty sensitive, I like them but I don't know if I could, hear somebody's eyebrows rustling. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. They were, they were, they, they needed, they needed her, but she does hair and um, she does the permanent eyebrow thing. And she's just, she's all around like Lucia's health and beauty. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a wash and wear girl. So low she, fuss I back. I like hanging out with her. She's she sells my CDs. She still she's like, give bring me twenty five more CDs. Okay, so we sell. She sells CDs for me. She sounds like she's quite a big personality. Oh, Lucia. Yes. You know all these big girls. She's awesome. <laughs> I haven't seen her since since all this has happened. I mean, I haven't even seen her because I'm not there. But yeah, incredibly generous. She lived in in West Berkeley as well. We had our whole little crew. But, yeah. I'm starting to get a little on the sleepy side. I am too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Rosalie. Thanks for, for coming to Armando's. I hope, hope to be not at Armando's, but if there's somewhere else to perform in. Oh, I have performed somewhere else in Martinez. Um, or is it not Martinez? It's a place on the corner that I performed with this dead cover band called Dead Again. And it has a bear in the bar. A, a bear? Like a grizzly a, bear? Like a grizzly bear in the bar. I don't know if that's in Martinez or the town next door. Benicia, it might be in Benicia. Thank you both. Thank you both. Thank you both. Thank you, Lynette. I hope you come back tomorrow night. Corona, Roki. And Lynette, I have a dress for you. I do. I have, a, I have this really beautiful blue dress that I've seen you in. And when I look at it, I go, I have to give that dress to Lynette. So we need to meet up. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Lynette, Rosalie, Courtney, and Dawn, and Heidi, and so many people that scrolled on and, and hung out. And Jeff, thank you so much. White Bear and Crockett? No, it's not in Crockett. But I love Crockett. I love Port Costa. There's so many really cool communities right in there and so much artisan energy. Yeah, I'm missing Oakland. Mm. But I'm what? loving my sunsets. You're loving it's not your a polar bear. 
It's a um it's not the it's not the warehouse in Crow no, it's in um I could message David and find out right now, but when am I coming back to the Bay Area? Well, you know, I don't really want to get on a plane right now. That's my answer. High five. If you don't need to do it, I would suggest people don't do it. There's still a lot that they don't understand. Yes, oh, Mama. Yeah, yeah she's, we hang out. Hey. She's been quiet. I haven't seen her pop up. She might have gone to sleep, but she didn't say good night. Well, sometimes we can go to sleep before we um, remember to say good night. So, Coquico, will you come back next week? I will come back next week. And maybe, just maybe, we can do some fishing to see, because we were thinking about doing some teaching together. Yes, do a Zoom. Uh -huh. What people might want to learn in terms of like life skills, we talked a little about grounding today. There's a whole lot we could talk about. And I know you've been doing meditations on Mondays. Which is evolving. And that would be between you and me at least 60 years of combined knowledge and training. And we love to share. So um, think about what you might want to have a class in that we might be able to put together and let Jenna know what's up because um, we're ready to go and get that information out. This is not a free class but it is a combined class of lots of knowledge kind of bullion cute. So um, I like transformative energy. You like transformative energy. I love helping get people unstuck. You love helping getting people unstuck. Let's see if we can liberate some vital life force together and help out some of the folks here. Here, let's, let's. I have to really do my yoga. Winking at you. <laughs> okay, until next. Yes, we are wild. More than you know, we are very wild women. Thank you. Yes, woman power. That includes every gender, every race, every demographic. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to exit stage right here. I don't know if I can hang up from here. I can. Good night, Coquico. Okay, <laughs> bye. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I'm and enjoying Thank you to your friends for coming in. Oh, yeah. And I'm loving getting to know your crew. And we'll just keep swimming up the stream together, little fishies. Little fishies. And thank you for your support. Oh, you bet. You're a gem. And most people know you as the singer, but they don't know you as all of that. And I want them to know that as well as this. Big hug to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <sighs> Hello, Michelle. Wow, that was a beautiful. I, I just, I love spending energy with her, you know, because we just, we, we give it, we get it. We, it's like. It just it just flows so beautifully and I'm happy that you were all here to hang out and add story and lots of love definitely thank you so much 
I am going to take Lillian to an appointment at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And it's 1 a.m. almost, which is cool. But we still have to go outside. First we potty, then we party. Right, Lil? First we potty, then we party. First we potty, then we party. First we potty, then we party. So tomorrow night, tomorrow day, will be, you know, we just flow during the day. People come on. They want to they wanna pop on, pop on with me, hang out. You can pop on through Messenger or through phone. And then um, tomorrow night, Corona Roki International Limited. So if you sing, if you dance, if you are a poet, if you play drums, if you play a horn, whatever, you can be a part of Corona Roki. Corona Roki International Limited. Starts at 11, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday night. And then Friday night, my friend Gina Molita is going to be here. Excuse me, Chef Gina Molita. So if you have any chefing questions, Friday night's good. Like, Gina, I have, you know, six pounds of asparagus. What do I do? So Gina, I have an orange and a pineapple and a tomato. What should I do? Well, what I, she's great. She's awesome. She's in New Orleans. She's a chef. Her husband's a chef. They just went on this really great trip and she's back to work. So she will be here Friday night. And then Saturday night is one more Saturday night with Gary Lambert. And then Sunday night, maybe Lynette's going to be here. I think. And if not, Maybe she's not. And um, I don't think we're going to be performing this weekend because it's Father's Day and, you know, it's just stuff going on. So we're, um, with my friend Tom Costanza, just not playing. But we might pop on. And what else? Monday is meditation. And then Tuesday, you know, it just keeps, keeps, keeps on rolling. So keep on scrolling by. If you feel like donating, you can donate to my Venmo page or my, um, in fact, I'll post that right now. People ask, where do I, where do I, how do I do? I don't know what to do. Where do I, what do I do? Oh, oh. Um, but anyway, I do, I have a Venmo page and I have, um, PayPal. And I have a cool Patreon page, and I'm just, I'm just here, and that's what, that's what helps me be here. So, thank you, thank you. Oh man, I just, I just blew that. Anyway, I appreciate you being here, and I wish you a calm and safe evening into the morning and hope to see you again soon. Thank you, Coquico. I think I'm all of you. See ya. Love heart.